The Toronto Necropolis was established in 1850, making it the oldest surviving municipal non-denominational cemetery space in the city of Toronto. Though today it sits in the middle of a gentrified Cabbage Town neighborhood, its location would have been the outskirts of the city in the 19th century. Its beautiful valley setting made it a popular recreation area at the time, and it is still heavily used as a green space, despite being the final resting place of more than 50,000 people. The Gothic Revival style chapel was constructed in 1872 and was designed by Toronto architect Henry Langley, who himself is buried within the cemetery. The cemetery is open daily, but if you want to pay the chapel a visit, note that it is only open Wednesdays when the cemetery office is staffed. Jack Layton was elected to Toronto City Council in 1982. He would become the leader of the federal New Democratic Party in 2003, and in 2011 the party became the official opposition. Unfortunately, he stepped aside due to illness and died before being able to sit in the House of Commons as leader of the opposition. Words from his final letter to Canadians are inscribed on his grave, and the bust on top was made by his wife, also a politician, Olivia Chow. Anderson Ruffin Abbott was Canada's first black doctor, graduating from the University of Toronto in 1861. Although born in Toronto, he traveled to the United States to work as a surgeon for the Union Army during the Civil War. William Lyon Mackenzie was elected the first mayor of Toronto in 1834 and served a difficult one-year term. Having long railed against the English elite that dominated Toronto society and controlled both the government and justice system, in 1837, he organized the Upper Canada Rebellion. The rebellion failed and Mackenzie fled to the U.S. He returned upon being pardoned in 1849 and would go on to serve in the legislature until 1858. Legendary American filmmaker, father of the zombie movie, George Romero is also buried here. Ned Hanlon was a famous oarsman, rowing his way to becoming Canada's first world sporting champion in 1880 and winning 343 of 350 career races. He would go on to become a city councillor and advocate for water protection. Samuel Lount and Peter Matthews fought in the unsuccessful 1837 Upper Canada Rebellion. They attempted to escape but were captured and put on trial. They were convicted of treason, and despite petitions for mercy and the fact that 15 children would be left fatherless, authorities felt that an example had to be made and the duo was hanged April 12th of 1838. Their simple original Potter's Field tombstone was moved to the necropolis in 1859, with William Lyon Mackenzie in attendance. The large monument came later in 1893. Thornton and Lucy Blackburn escaped from slavery in Kentucky and eventually ended up in Toronto where they became entrepreneurs, starting the city's first taxi company. They were active abolitionists, and their home would become a stop on the Underground Railroad. George Brown was an American newsman who founded Toronto's Globe newspaper in 1844. In 1851, he entered political office and is regarded as one of the fathers of Canadian Confederation in 1867. now the final stop on our visit to Toronto Necropolis. Arthur Roy Brownie Brown was a Canadian World War I flying ace. Though he himself never claimed the kill and reported their battles indecisive, for decades he was credited as the one who shot down German ace Manfred von Richthofen, the infamous Red Baron.